Hello everybody, I'm Michelle Anderson, founder of Clarinet Mentors, and today I have a video that's designed to help you move your fingers a little bit faster around the instrument. I'm a big believer in just having a system to learn, sort of a tried and true system that makes your playing easier. And what I have to show you today is a very small specific thing, in fact we're focusing on just this, my left thumb, your left thumb. And what I've been noticing a lot with some of my students in the last week or two is that when they hit a part in the music that's giving them a lot of trouble with their fingers, it's often that their left thumb is not doing what it's supposed to do. So sometimes when we're working on a musical instrument, we have a major thing to work on, like posture or embouchure that makes a difference for a whole bunch of notes. Sometimes it's one small thing, but that one small thing can help so many things, and this is one of those things. Our poor left thumb often gets ignored as we're figuring out what to do with our fingers, but it's a really important part of clarinet playing because it does a few different things. It covers the thumb hole, but of course it also operates our register key. And a lot of times people find moving between the low register and the high register is tricky. And this thumb, if it's in the wrong position, may be doing a lot more work than it needs to, and especially it might not be covering the hole well when you're moving between the registers and anytime we have a hole that's leaking a little bit of air there'll be a delay in the sound or it'll feel hard to blow and that's where we start to get frustrated so I want to talk a little bit about how you could be holding your left thumb differently that might make it a lot easier for you to play now I have other videos here on YouTube that talk about the ideal position for your fingers on the left hand, and I'll very briefly review it here. We want our fingers to be rounded and arched because they move much faster in that position rather than squished in here at this knuckle. We want them rounded. We want our left hand fingers to actually point upward a little bit instead of coming in perpendicular to the instrument. That's so that our top finger here can already be lightly resting on the A key and the G sharp key so that when we have to move there our fingers have very little room to move. We always want our fingers to be as close to their keys as possible so we don't have to move them around very much. So what does that do to our thumb? Well, I'm just going to flip around here. Our thumb ideally what I see a lot of people do is they play the low register like this and the high register like this and their thumb does this very complicated slide up and down. Ideally, rather than sliding, it should rock, like this. Here's low register. Notice, if you can, my thumb is already is resting on the edge of the register key, and now I rock it up. There's low, there's high. I'm moving very, very small amount, low to high, low to high. A little hard to do turning my arm backwards, which of course you wouldn't be doing if you were playing, but that's the amount of movement we want. Many people, if their thumb is sliding from the front, I see their whole wrist bobbing up and down like this. They're flapping their wrist around. Right now, here's my thumb rocking up, down, up, down. This is what it looks like from the front. Up, down, up, down, up, down. This part of my hand is not moving at all. The less movement we have, the easier it is for us to fly around through the instrument. So basically, for most people, if we look at them from the back, their thumb will come in at an angle, about 45 degrees. It's a little different depending on how long your fingers are, but you need to find that ideal finger. When you're playing in the low register, you want the top edge of your thumb to rest on that register key. When you go to the high register, you don't need to slide up to cover the key with your thumb. You just need the edge of your thumb to do that for you. It's a little hard to see your thumb in the mirror. A lot of times I love having people sit in front of a mirror so they can watch the position of their hand. But what you can watch for is that movement of the wrist that I was talking about. You can also hold your clarinet out in front of you like I'm doing now and pretend to be playing. So now I'm watching my thumb and I'm just fingering low to high, low to high, and I'm watching my thumb. Just that act of, of looking at it and seeing what it does starts to train our body to move in a slightly better position. Now I've created a really simple worksheet here that has some common thumb patterns that will help us to um, train our thumb to sit in the right place. So you can download it at the link below 
and if you don't have that easily accessible, I'll also just share with you what the notes are as we do it. So I would invite you to take a look at that. I also, while you're looking down there, you'll see a comments box below this video. Please feel free to ask me any questions you have or any recommendations for future videos you'd like to see that would help you play clarinet more easily. I love hearing from you and I do look at those comments. So once you have that worksheet in front of you, you'll notice that the first exercise simply has our low C to our open G. Now for this, um, you probably find those notes quite easy. Some of the first notes we ever learn on clarinet. Your assignment for that exercise is just to watch your thumb and to make sure that when you're placing it, it's not perpendicular to the instrument that we're not leaving space, but that your thumb is actually touching the register key a little bit. So that's the movement your thumb is doing. Open G, it pulls back. Low C, it pulls forward, just like that. And you can just slur those notes. Now, since we can't see ourselves, you can also hold your clarinet out in front of you and just watch. And notice that your thumb is doing what we want it to do. Finger pattern number two, we go into the high register, but we're also lifting our clarinet away. Really, I wouldn't see much difference at all other than when my thumb comes down, it rolls just that extra little bit to push that key down. Now here's some of the common problems we might run into. If your thumb, as it's moving around, is not covering the hole all the way, which is usually because we're sliding it too high up the key, you'll hear a gap in those notes. It might sound something like this. Now I exaggerated it on that second one, but you could hear there was that space. And what I felt like was that it was hard to blow, lots of resistance, which we don't want. When my thumb's in the right place, it actually comes out effortlessly. Now, it might be one of your other fingers that's not covering the hole. That happens too, but we're focusing on our thumb right now. Sometimes, when you're experimenting with changing your thumb position, you, you do want to keep an eye on what your top left hand finger is doing. It may accidentally push this key down, your G-sharp key. So sometimes our hand will, as I'm moving it, kind of come in contact with that key and that will cause a leak. So if you're pretty sure your thumb's doing the right thing, make sure you're not accidentally pushing that key open. All right, let's look at the third pattern on the sheet from open G to high G. Really very similar to what we were just doing, but now we're trying to move our whole left hand and our goal for our front fingers and our thumb is to move it as little as possible. Just very, very gentle movements and my, my thumb, again, is just Coming back and pushing in. Now you can tongue the low G if that helps you out and just slur up, but I recommend slurring up because we can really hear what our fingers are doing. If I'm tonguing, I'm disguising it. If I'm slurring and they're not clean, I heard that. I was like, oh, something came early there. So I would have a chance to correct it until it feels very smooth. So the idea with these patterns is just repeat them over and over. I have them written for a couple of bars each, but the idea is you just repeat that pattern until it feels really easy and really comfortable. And pattern four is a really useful one to play. In fact, if you only did one pattern, I would do this one. That's our B flat to C. It's especially when we're coming from B flat, crossing into the high register, that I find people do a lot of funny movement here and it slows them down like crazy. Or they get that delay in the note because their thumb hasn't come off the key to cover the hole. So again, I would hold the clarinet out where you can see it and I'm holding mine backwards so you can see it. But of course, when you're looking at your own, hold it where you can see it comfortably. This is what I want my thumb to look like. Barely moving at all. I know you can't see my thumb, and I'm not sure I could play it where you could, but I'll try, actually. See if you can see it. Gives you a sense of what my thumb is doing. Trying not to move much at all. I was kind of holding my body in a funny position to get it in the camera, but it gives you a sense of what I'm focusing on as I do that. Our last pattern is also really, really good because we go from open G 
to B flat. When we're coming from a low note to the high register, our thumb's already on the key, so it's a little bit easier to not have it move very much. When we come from open G, our thumb has the opportunity to move wherever it wants to, and it's funny how often I'll see people work their way up a scale, maybe C, D, E, F, and when they go to G, woohoo, their thumb goes flying away, and then it's out of position. We want our thumb to always hover right above the key. So G to B flat should involve us, again, barely moving our thumb and watch that it doesn't go up too high like this. We want it to just barely hit it so that it can then roll into position for the C. So I'm barely touching it and then rolling it into place. This is a really specific small exercise and some of you might be wondering if it's worth, worth the effort. It is worth the effort. I have seen so much improvement in so many people who take the time just to adjust that. What you'll notice when it is working smoothly is then we, we start to train our thumb by focusing on it as part of our warm-up. So I recommend you take this exercise. It really only takes about two minutes to do the whole thing, but really focus on it. And sort of subconsciously, our brain sends the message that that's what we want our body to do. And it will start to do that as you're working on your repertoire. It can make a big difference. So I want you to try this out and be committed to doing it for two weeks. It takes a couple weeks for anything to really take hold. But I want to challenge you for the next two weeks, just work on your left thumb. And notice when you have a piece of music, perhaps where you are going from B flat to C, you might want to take that small little piece of music and take a little pattern out of it and do the same thing there so that you're regularly working on this. And tell me how it goes. Fill in your comments. I think you'll find it will help and I'm curious to hear from you. If you've enjoyed this video, and you're not already a member of the Clarinet Mentors community, I want you to join. It's absolutely free. You just go to www.learnclarinetnow.com, the link's below, and every two weeks you'll get a newsletter from me where I put in some of my favorite clarinet pointers and recommend clarinet music and tools and things that I think will help you play the instrument more easily. It's free to join. If it's ever not a good fit for you, it's really easy to unsubscribe as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you on the next video.